And now to a surprise development overnight tied to that raid on the New Mexico compound where children were allegedly being taught how to carry out school shootings and being starved. The five suspects who were arrested could soon be out of jail. NBC's Gotti Schwartz has those details this morning. Gotti, good morning. What's this all about? Hey, good morning, Savannah. Yeah, it's right. It's hard to believe given how serious those allegations are, but not only will these suspects most likely be able to walk out of jail today, they are doing so on what's called a signature bond. That basically means all they have to do is sign their name. They don't have to post any money. The court does reserve the right. A shocking decision in a New Mexico courtroom. I'm going to deny the, the petition for um, pretrial um, detention pending trial. A judge deciding five adults accused of abusing 11 children in this remote compound in northern New Mexico will be released from jail and placed on house arrest. The hearing held to determine whether the defendants were a threat after prosecutors allege the children were starving and may have been trained to carry out deadly school shootings. But in court, those allegations of abuse were not the state's main focus. According to FBI testimony, the suspects believed God was speaking to them and that a three-year-old child named Abdul, who had a history of seizures, needed an exorcism to rid him of demons. Also in testimony, children on the compound told authorities Abdul died in February during a religious ritual performed by Siraj Wahaj, the boy's father. The victim, Abdul, would uh, begin to choke and have white foam or slime come from his mouth and then pass out. He passed away. Okay. Yes. He died. His heart stopped. A body believed to be Abdul's was discovered in one of the tunnels six months later. The boys were told Abdul would be resurrected as Jesus and would instruct them with a plan of attack. He would instruct FL and Siraj on which corrupt institutions to go after. One of the boys, a 15-year-old, allegedly taught advanced weapons training. Deputies say nine guns were found scattered on the property. One of the children telling the FBI he was armed when they raided the compound. But defense lawyers say the guns were lawfully owned. My son's 13 and I've taught him and his sister both how to use guns and nobody's looking at me. I have the same guns that these people have and nobody's looking at me as a terrorist. The judge determining the state did not prove the suspects posed enough of a public threat. The state alleges that there was a, a big plan afoot, but the state hasn't shown to my satisfaction by clear and convincing evidence what in fact that plan was. Wow. Um, so, Gotti, there were children who were also recovered from there. What happens to those kids? Well, right now, the state of New Mexico is asking that those kids remain in the care of the state in foster homes. Uh, and there's going to be a hearing a little bit later in the week for that. As for the conditions of the release, uh, those parents, those suspects are going to be allowed uh, supervised visitation as long as they don't discuss this case. So we're here in Taos and we just heard that the Taos courthouse has been put under lockdown. Uh, you've got security teams that are moving in here. Um, from what we're told, there's a, there's a credible threat. Hey guys, I'm Gotti Schwartz. I'm a reporter with NBC News, and we were just given some pretty rare access uh, by a property owner here in the desert of New Mexico. So uh, we wanted to kind of take you along, show you what's going on, so you have a, a clear picture uh, of what happened here. Um, there's some things that we're not going to show you just because they're, they're sensitive in nature, um, but there are some things that kind of uh, just show how disturbing uh, the scene was when investigators rolled up. So uh, just to set the scene, this is uh, a place in northern New Mexico. Right now we are just uh, south of the New Mexico-Colorado border. And this right here is a compound where investigators say that they believe a, a family was living here, um, 11 kids found in states of starvation, and they might have been trained here to carry out a uh, school shooting. So it's pretty, it's pretty hard to believe that, that children could be taught how to carry out a school shooting, but um, some of the things that, that we're seeing around this compound kind of fit. Uh, with with the narrative that the police have put forward. So this right here is the outside of the compound. You can see there are two different walls. Uh, this one is a berm built up of, of tires and then there's an earthen berm on the other side. And then you've got this. This is kind of this um, makeshift shelter. And then you've got this tunnel that goes under here all the way in. And this just going to walk down here. And again, we, we have permission from the property owners to be here. Um, they're, they're very angry. They're very frustrated with 
with investigators and investigators have already cleared the scene. This is no longer a crime scene. So um, again, we're not gonna show you anything um, that's, that's private information, um, but we are gonna give you kind of a look as to the living conditions. Just take a peek inside of here. Um, and then you've got things like, like this, uh, 223. And then you've got some sort of Bushmaster. Now, we understand that police have taken out most of the guns. You've got some gun cases over there and some gun cleaning kits, but this is the condition that uh, that, that family was living in. It was five adults and 11 kids. And this is where they were living. There were firearms here within reach of the children. And the property owners actually came back after the after this area was cleared and investigators said that they were done uh, searching for evidence and the property owners found two more guns. They found a shotgun, a tactical vest, and a pistol, uh, and a bunch of cameras. So they turned that over to investigators, but they were very frustrated. They don't think that there was a, a thorough job done. Um, there's some other stuff. This right here is a, a Quran that's open. Uh, there's quite a few Qurans on this property. And there's also one Bible. Um, but we, we do know that this family was, uh, was Muslim. And in fact, one of the fathers, uh, the father that was being sought um, for kidnapping, was in fact related to a very well-known imam in uh, in Brooklyn, New York, and that imam has been indirectly linked with some terrorist attacks. A terrorist attack in 1993 of the uh, the World Trade Center. So um, we're still looking into that. This is the back area. And right now, investigators don't have anything tying that imam to what was going on here in New Mexico. It sounds like they came out here because uh, they had gotten a report that the family was, was starving. Somebody here sent a note out to the outside world basically saying that they needed food, they were broke, and they were starving. So that's what precipitated this raid. But uh, the property owners here say these people were squatting here for quite some time. They were told about them um, and they didn't do anything for months. And so the property owners, they think that if something would have been done much sooner, um, they may not have found a, a child's body buried in one of these tunnels over here. Now, this area back here, this is a makeshift firing range. It looks like it was used for target practice. And this is where investigators believe that those children may have been receiving advanced weapons training, which is pretty alarming. There were kids from ages one to 15 that were here and they were, they were living here in the desert without access to running water, electricity. Um, but then there are some, some weird things that you find uh, in this compound. One of the things that we found was a, a Karma drone and um, batteries to it, a GoPro 5s, some pretty expensive equipment. So uh, it seemed like the kids were starving. They were found in rags, according to police. Um, and yet they had this really expensive electronic equipment. And that over there, uh, that's the compound. I want to show you this because it's pretty remarkable. Over here, they, had, they buried a lot of stuff, including like a camper down in that shelter. And then right over here, here it is. Um, I'm going to show you this. This is in the middle of the desert. You've got this small hole, and this small hole is basically a ladder to a tunnel, and that tunnel extends all the way inside of that shelter. So it looks like it was some sort of escape hole or an escape tunnel. Uh, we'll go back inside and I'll show you that really quick. Um, but it's, it extends about 150 feet, and apparently investigators, the first time they were here, um, they did a cursory search. They removed, I believe it was five guns, one assault rifle, and four pistols, and a lot of ammunition. Um, but they were still looking for a small boy, a, a three-year-old boy named Abdul, and uh, they couldn't find him. So apparently, after interrogating and questioning some of the members of the family, um, they were told that that boy was here, still on still in the compound and they came back and uh, they searched um, what they were told was the tunnel and this is that tunnel so 
the traps down. And uh, it goes about 150 feet in. Um, there's a lot of different passages, so it looks like it splits off to the right, splits off to the left. And we're not exactly sure where the uh, where the boy was found, but we understand that uh, the body was found in a state of de decomposition, and it looked like it had been there for a little while. And um, and right now they're running tests to determine uh, whether or not that small body was in fact the body of Abdul. So that's one of the things that. Um, we're expecting to hear from investigators pretty soon. We're also hearing that investigators may be filing more charges in the coming days. So, uh, very difficult scene uh, to take in here. Um, but, you know, right now there are a lot of different versions of events that are going on. And uh, I figured it was, it was best to take you guys here and, and show you exactly what we're seeing and, uh, and give you an idea of what investigators are talking about when you see the allegations on the news. And found to have 11 starving children who, according to court documents, were being trained to be militants by Islamic fundamentalists who also had ties to terror. But a new development in the story, which dropped last night, is pretty difficult to wrap the mind around. These suspects are being released while they have signature bond. Some say that it's all part of bail reform, and New Mexico is one of those states that is experimenting with this. Uh, they have to pay $20,000 if they fail to meet the terms of their signature bond. They have to check in. They have to wear ankle bracelets. They can't own firearms. They cannot consume alcohol. And, I mean, again, these individuals were in a compound in New Mexico, 11 starving children, one had an active warrant out from Georgia because he had kidnapped a three-year-old, and the remains of a three-year-old were found on the property of that compound, and prosecutors say that that three-year-old was the missing boy from Georgia who happens to be one of the men's son, and that is Siraj Wahaj, who is the son of the New York City imam. We've talked about that. How is it that with all of this, that did not pose a clear enough threat for the judge to consider. Now, the judge in this case says that the prosecution failed to make their case that these individuals were a danger to the public. In what universe does that seem even remotely like a good judgment call? And additionally, where are all the gun control fanatics? Because it seems like the only way, the only, they only get motivated to march in the streets when the plan is to disarm law-abiding citizens. But here you have actual criminals caught training starving children to be school shooters. They were even doing, they were doing clear, they were doing all sorts of drills and tactics. They were clearing the rooms, according to the kids whose ages ranged from one to 15. They were practicing attacking teachers. They were released because what is happening with our bail system? 